These are the Adidas Solar Boost. These are the Adidas Ultra Boost. Which one is the better boost? Well, it depends. Let's get into it. Now, just so I am clear, the shoe I'm going to be talking about today is the Solar Boost, but it's the Solar Boost 3 and not the Solar Boost 4. Although there really doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the Solar Boost 3 and 4, apart from some changes to the upper. And not in the same way that the Peg 38 changed its upper from the 37. This is even more minor. When I look at the pictures side by side, apart from a few different placements of the overlays on the upper, it looks near identical, but the Adidas website does say that the Solar Boost now is made with 50% recycled materials. Having said that though, the Solar Boost 3 was a prime green upper, which basically means that there was no virgin plastics used in the making of the mesh in the upper. So it's not a totally irresponsible environmentally, no, it was still an environmentally conscious choice. Now the reason for that little intro is just because I think that if you are considering a solar boost, I'm pretty sure that all of the comments in this video would apply equally to the 3 and the 4. If there is someone out there who has run in the 4 and strongly disagrees, please sound off in the comments below. But with that out of the way, I am also going to make some comparisons to the Ultra Boost because I think that there would be a lot of people out there who would be considering one or the other and potentially wondering which one is better. Before I do any of that, let's dive into the specs of the Solar Boost 3, which I will add are near identical to the Solar Boost 4, save for the upper being made of those 50% recycled materials. And what we've got is a neutral road running shoe. Although there are control rails in the Solar Boost 3 that offer stability, there is an engineered mesh upper sitting on top of a full boost midsole. We've got 32 mil stack in the heel, 22 mil in the forefoot, giving us a 10 mil drop, 305 grams or 10.8 ounces for a US men's size nine. And if you're interested, my US men's 13 clocks in at 13 and a half ounces or 386 grams. While we're talking about specs, it's worthwhile drawing a comparison to the Ultra Boost. I'll use the 21 as the reference point, only because I have used that one the most and I don't own a pair of the 22s yet. And as far as weight goes, they're very similar. The US men's size 9 clocks in at 310 grams, which is five grams more than the Solar Boost. But interestingly, I did put my pair on the scales because when I pick them up, they do feel quite different and the Ultra Boost feels a lot more heavier. It came in at a whopping 439 grams or 15 and a half ounces. Ouch. Probably explains why I didn't really enjoy running in it. More on that in a sec. They have the same drop at 10 mils, although the stacks are different. The Ultra Boost is actually lower, but you wouldn't probably think that looking at the shoes side by side. And the uppers are different as well. And this is where I think the biggest point of difference is between the Solar Boost and the Ultra Boost series. The Ultra Boost series has always used a booty type construction. And 
I'm not the biggest fan of a booty construction, so I guess my comments here are going to be a personal preference. But what I find when you're using a shoe for performance needs, that that booty style construction doesn't give you the control that you want over fit. And so that can impact comfort over the long run. I don't mind using the Ultra Boost for the short run or to kick about the gym and then maybe do a few Ks on the treadmill after. But if I'm looking for a dedicated running shoe to take out with me, it's not my best choice. As I've said a couple of times on the channel though, that doesn't mean I don't like the Ultra Boost 21 or any of the other Ultra Boosts. In fact, I love them. I own a heap of them. I think that they're excellent shoes, just not my favorite shoes to run in. I much, much prefer the Solar Boost 3. And from what I can tell, the Solar Boost 4 is identical. You get a really breathable upper that is really well padded around the heel. That padding also extends to this gusseted tongue. And that gusseted tongue really gives you the best of both worlds. You are sort of attached to the upper of the shoe, and that means your tongue isn't flipping about, but you're able to get the lockdown that you want and it feels really comfortable around that area. I've been running in some pretty hot conditions here in Melbourne and I've found that a shoe with this much mesh up top it actually breathes quite well and it's been really comfortable on those runs. What you also get on the Solar Boost, like I mentioned in the specs, are these control rails along the side of the shoe. They used to be the Solar Boost ST that was sold in line with the Solar Boost. The last pair of Solar Boosts I owned were the 19s and I really like those. I don't think they sell the ST anymore and that ST model was the specific stability offering. So it looks like they've kind of tried to capture stability and comfort for both types of runners, a neutral runner as well as a over pronator in the one package. What I like about this sort of stability setup is that it is less obvious than the way that traditional stability shoes have been made with those medial posts in the midsole. And so it's not really offensive if you're a neutral runner who doesn't need that stability. But I think if you are a stability needing runner, you would find some benefit in having this in a package like what the Solar Boost offers, which I think is max cushion. It definitely feels max cushion anyway. Boost here is full length and it feels a lot more similar to what a Ultra Boost 19 or 20 felt like. It's soft, but it's not unstable, so you don't feel like it's so squishy that you're going to fall off uh, but it is also responsive so it does allow you to get on your toes and pick up the speed a little bit it's really comfortable at least for my runs i've got no complaints with it i'm a fan of boost so i wouldn't have expected to not like it but it is not like the ultra boost 21 the ultra boost 21 if you need that reference point was a little bit more firmer than those of us who have used ultra boost shoes in the past would have expected the solar boost boost is nicer to run in well for me at least finishing up the setup underfoot we've got a outsole with a heap of continental rubber in the same stretch web pattern that we saw in the ultra boost 21 the stretch web pattern is meant to enhance the feeling of boost primarily the responsiveness as i understand it the rubber is meant to expand and retract as you need it giving the boost what it needs to pop off I guess I can't say I find it any more responsive than what the solar boost 19 was or the ultra boost 19 or 20 but that's just me the solar boost 3 also carries the same LEP torsion system that we saw first introduced on the Solar Boost 21. You can see it here on this shoe. It's that panel that is like this orangey, pinky type of maybe coral color. And if you hear it, it's a hard piece of TUP plastic, primarily located around the midfoot, but you can see it kind of stretches into parts of the forefoot and back end of the shoe. The idea with that plate is to provide as much torsion support as possible so that your forefoot and heel can get the most out of the boost by acting sort of independently, giving your foot the ability to kind of like naturally 
complete its stride. Uh, that probably hasn't helped. I did explain myself a little bit better in the Ultra Boost 21 video. Maybe go check that out if you're interested. I think it's a good system. It's definitely not intrusive and I think it does what it needs to do. It's obvious for me. The Solar Boost, in my opinion, is a much more comfortable running shoe. It is lighter, but apart from being lighter, it just feels more comfortable on foot. I find that while the material in the upper of the Ultra Boost 21 is fine and it's really nice actually it's not just fine I don't like that my foot feels so constrained and I can't really get a lockdown that feels good over a longer distance the way that the Ultra Boost 21 was made though it had a firmer boost midsole which again I didn't mind but feels better in the Solar Boost 3 I would pick the Solar Boost just because it is a more comfortable shoe to run in, but it definitely doesn't look as good as the Ultra Boost series. And so I think the question you need to ask yourself is what are you intending to do with the pair of shoes? Are you looking to only run in them and you want that Boost midsole, but not really wear them for anything else? Then I would go the Solar Boost. Actually, that's not even right. You could go with either shoe because they both look fine and you can wear them. I think it's going to be about which one is the more fashionable shoe of the two. And in my opinion, it is the Ultra Boost 21. I think that looks legitimately awesome in a casual lifestyle scenario, just as much as it looks wicked in the gym. The Solar Boost, in my opinion, is a little bit more daggy if you wanted to use it for lifestyle or casual sort of use. But it doesn't mean it's a bad choice. I'm beating around the bush a bit. It is a bit more daggy. The decision's up to you. Running, Solar Boost. A bit of everything, Ultra Boost. That's my opinion. I'm interested in yours. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And until the next video, laters.